Get away from me. Ah! Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and this is the new Red Magic 7 from Nubia. And right now, this is the most powerful gaming phone in the world. So I've actually teamed up with Red Magic for this video because I want to show you just what this can do. Although, of course, as always, all my opinions are my own. Now, to give you an idea of how fast this is, let's bring in this guy, last year's Red Magic phone, which is still incredibly powerful. You can hear the fan has already started whirring up. Snapdragon 888, 16 gigs of RAM, not too shabby. But then we have the new one, the 7. This has the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, up to 18 gigs of RAM, and side by side in the 20 minute 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Stress Benchmark, which tests the graphics performance, the new phone is 65% faster. And in this test, at least, that's the difference of getting between 7 and 13 FPS or 12 and 20 FPS. In the Antutu benchmark, the jump is only around 10%, which is obviously not quite as impressive, but for gamers, it all adds up. And so as you would expect, this just breezed through everything I threw at it. I fired up a bit of Genshin Impact, naturally fully maxed out the settings, and then I pulled out Red Magic's game menu, which gives you access to a bunch of shortcuts and options, one of which is the performance monitor. So you can see we've now got the live FPS counter. Now Genshin is capped at 60 FPS, sadly, although you can see it never drops below. It goes between 60 and even 61. This is as smooth as a baby's bum. But then, if we bring in last year's Red Magic phone, again, still very powerful, but with the same settings, you can see it actually fluctuates between 50 and 60. Benchmarks are one thing, but we're seeing a real world difference here. And for the gamer who buys gaming phones, this is a big deal. Okay, so we've established this is a pretty quick phone and actually a solid upgrade even over last year's flagship gaming phones. But there's something else I wanna show you. This. Now it's not a new feature having an inbuilt turbo fan, although this one actually is more efficient and more effective. It goes up to 20,000 RPM. Plus, of course, we have the Go Faster RGB now. Actually, one thing I do want to show you first, listen to the difference. I'm going to turn the fan on here, put it up to the mic. You can just about hear it. When you're gaming, if you've got the volume on, you can't really, but yes, you can hear the fan. Now, let's bring in the Red Magic 6. Can you hear that difference? It's a lot whinier, a lot noisier. Apparently they've added a new metal plate inside to reduce the volume of the fan and the pitch is just way less annoying. Although I should say this fan is only on the Supernova model of the Red Magic 7. There's also Pulsar and Obsidian versions with slightly different designs. Although Red Magic do sell external fans that you can clip on if you do fancy one of those versions. And also this fan is just part of their new ICE 8.0 cooling system, which gives us better airflow, more conductive materials, more efficient heat sinks. Anyway, why am I talking about this? Well, let's see how this compares to a regular flagship phone, a non-gaming phone if you will, but still with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And just look at this, again in that 20 minute stress test from 3 Mark, we're looking at a 98.9% .9 stability versus 63% on a non-gaming competitor without a dedicated fan or this fancy cooling system. And you can see from the graph, the regular phone has to keep throttling down to keep cool, whereas the Red Magic 7, it doesn't break a sweat, which is exactly what you want to see on a gaming phone where you might be playing for hours and hours on end. And if you're thinking, whoa, hold on, Tom, you said this was the fastest gaming phone in the world. What about the iPhone? I mean, that's pretty powerful with its A15 chip. Well, yes, of course it is, but I ran the same test again on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, and while we did actually see a higher peak score on the iPhone, even that throttles. And actually for 19 of the 20 loops, it's actually slower than the Red Magic. What else? Well, as I think any good gaming phone should have, we have these shoulder triggers, which you can assign to controls in your game. You just turn it on and then drag the L and R triggers over the virtual buttons you want them to control, and that's it. And it makes such a big difference to making mobile games feel more like proper console games. Then we have the 165 Hz refresh rate, which is still a bit overkill. I mean, there's only a handful of games that even hit 144, but you have the option, it's feature-proof. And even on menus and just generally using the phone and browsing the web, it makes everything feel ridiculously quick, especially with the 720 Hz touch response rate. So the instant you press that screen, it reacts. 
The Red Magic 7 also supports what they call 4D vibration, so in games that support it, like PUBG, you can get a more immersive haptic feedback. Then of course we have the new chip, we have more and faster RAM, an improved cooling system, and then there's some of Red Magic's own secret source, some of their own uh, hardware and technologies that boost and stabilize your frame rate even further, beyond just what the already very capable Snapdragon chip can do. You'll also notice we have this little guy on the side. Welcome to the game space. And in here, you can tinker with your settings for each game, like maxing out that 720Hz sampling rate, which is particularly helpful in twitchy multiplayer games. You can adjust the performance and actually even add plugins. This is actually a new feature to mod your games, and there's a whole plugin library you can browse. It's definitely worth exploring. And then there's some nice extras like we get a headphone jack, dual speakers, three mics, so if you're streaming from this or recording a gameplay, your voice still sounds good. And also we get Wi-Fi 6E support, although of course you do still need a compatible router. There does seem to be one downgrade though, coming from this guy which had a 5050 milliamp hour battery, in the 7, we only have a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which isn't the biggest, considering we have a 6.8 inch screen, and of course, it is a gaming phone. And playing Genshin, which of course is a very demanding game, and with 50% brightness at 120 FPS and the medium sort of balanced performance mode, I only got about two and a half hours of gameplay from this. Your mileage may vary, and of course it all comes down to what game you're playing and how demanding it is, but I had hoped we'd see a longer battery life. I just don't think 4500 milliamps is quite big enough. And I also did notice, despite the fan going, it did get quite toasty near the top of the phone. There is a sort of anti-sweat, anti-fingerprint coating on the back, so you're not going to get all gross, but it did make my palms quite warm. So that's my main criticism, but I tell you what I do like, the software. And it's actually quite refreshing not to see a ton of bloatware or pre-installed apps. The only thing I had to change was the default browser. We're getting Android 12 with Red Magic's OS 5.0 on top, and this latest version has refreshed some of the design, including the gaming menus. And I can tell you with that 165 Hertz refresh, the whole thing just feels incredibly responsive. Now, as for the camera, well, you kind of know how it goes on these gaming phones. It is a bit of an afterthought. It's still a solid setup. We get a triple lens system, main, an ultra wide, and a telephoto. And in good light, you know, it does the job. But realistically, if you're gonna be buying this, it's for the gaming merits and not necessarily the camera performance. But as I say, it still does a decent job. I do like the look of this thing though. It is undoubtedly a gaming phone, and we even have some of the key specs written on the back, which is quite a nice touch. It is all glass, and we have an aluminium frame, but really the impressive design elements are on the inside with that ice cooling system. This is the first proper gaming phone of 2022, and it's the one to beat. And although the battery and the cameras aren't its strongest suit, the performance is top notch, and it is definitely worth considering. But what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to buy this? Do you buy gaming phones? Let me know in the comments below. And also let me know what you're playing at the moment. I'm always open to some new suggestions. Thank you so much for watching guys. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.